Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Now, although childhood cancer is relatively rare, the incidence rate has been increasing. According to a 2014 report by the American Cancer Society, it is now estimated that one in 408 children worldwide will be diagnosed with cancer before the age of 15. Now, we're joined by pediatric oncologist Dr. Enel Fenzel to discuss what parents can look out for and what steps they should follow when they think that their child might be at risk. Connect with us online and if you have any questions for Dr. Fanzel, and remember to use the hashtag Afternoon Express in all of your comments. Welcome back to The Loft Duck. Thank you very much. So with discussing such a sensitive subject that is cancer, especially in children, what can parents look out for? What are some of the early detectors and things that are warning signs? All right, so the early warning signs of childhood cancer is really a list of signs and symptoms that might point to the fact that there may be cancer present. Mm. In 85% of childhood cancer cases, these one or more of these uh, signs and symptoms will mm. be present. Um, it is important to realize that these signs and symptoms are not specific for cancer, otherwise they might worry too much, yes. you know, about a common fever. Um, but they may also be present in a wide range of other diseases. But it is important to put the focus on childhood cancer and to make mm. people think of it, especially the healthcare professionals and then the parents. So in South Africa, we've got this list is called the St. Silouan Early Warning Signs of Childhood Cancer. Okay. And Silouan, spelled S-I-L-U-A-N, was the name of a monk who used to pray for mankind. So that is used as a mnemonic for this list. Okay. So we can go through the um, yes, different signs acronym. and symptoms. Mm. Yeah, so the first one is S, mm. which stands for Seek Help for Persistent Symptoms. So the key word there is persistent. Mm. If something doesn't go away, there is a problem and it needs to be addressed and investigated. Mm. What's the time frame you could say? It depends on the on the okay. symptom really. Mm -hmm. um, the second one, I, actually refers to the eye. Um, and a very important sign is there a white spot in the pupil of the eye. Oh. So normally if you take a picture you will see a red reflex yes. that we don't like in photos. But if you see a white reflex that is very worrisome and mm. needs to be checked, especially in very young babies and children. Mm. Um, also a sudden squint or the child becoming cross-eyed or the eyeball itself bulging out. Or if the child complains of decreased vision or mm. even sudden vision loss. Um, the L then stands for lumps, which means it's growths or masses or swellings. Okay. And that can be anywhere in the body, mm. from the head to the chest, abdomen, arms and legs. And that also includes any enlarged lymph nodes. So yes. commonly we see it in the neck, mm. but it might also be in other areas. Um, and then the U is for anything that's unexplained. So there's a lot of reasons for these symptoms, as I have alluded to before. Yes. So that would be fever for more than two weeks, for which there is no other cause mm. that is found, or unexplained weight loss, and that is a serious thing in a child to have weight loss, yes. and fatigue, um, or also pallor, which means just a pale appearance, mm. and then bruising and bleeding is another important symptom to okay. note. Um, A stands for aches or pain mm. anywhere in the body, and children don't really complain of pain. They mm -hmm. like to play and be active, so if they complain, you must take it seriously, Absolutely. especially if it's then persistent. Mm. And the last one, the N? The N is for neurological signs, meaning the brain, central nervous system, and that is headaches for more than a week with or without vomiting, mm. regression of milestones, they could mm. walk and talk before, now they can't, or maybe enlarging head, especially in the baby, and very important, uh, problem with balance. Okay. Well, well, doctor, as you already said, a lot of these can have overlapping uh, diagnosis. And what are some of the misconceptions that people might have, especially in this early detection? So I think the most important one is that people don't, some people don't realize that children can get cancer. Mm. Um, we can diagnose, even babies shortly after birth can be diagnosed with cancer. So that's the first thing. Mm. 
The second thing is that people might think early detection is not really important because they might think that the treatment is not effective. Yes. Especially in some African countries, people don't think there is a, a cure. But the opposite is true. Um, the earlier you diagnose the mm. cancer, the better the outcome. Absolutely. So if you have found that your child has um, exhibited some of these traits or some of these um, early detection wa warning signs and signals, mm -hmm. what should a parent do? What is the next step that they need and the process that they need to go through? Okay, so after taking a deep breath, they have to take mm. the child to the closest healthcare professional or facility that they would usually go to. And then tell the doctor it's good to list all the symptoms and signs at home and actually take a little list, otherwise you forget things. Absolutely, that happens, yeah. Very often. Very often. Um, mention all of it and then say to the doctor, I'm worried that this might be one of the early warning signs of childhood cancer. It also alerts the healthcare professional, you know, mm. of the seriousness mm. or, or the worry. Um, and then it can be investigated and be seen if it is possible childhood cancer or something else. Mm. Um, and then initially after treatment has been prescribed for some condition, if mm. the child does not improve and there the persistence comes in again, a reassessment must be performed. Mm. And we always say we believe the mother, if the child, if the mum says the child is not well, you must listen mm. to her. Um, but if the, the mother has this persistent worry, the child is not getting better. Yes. They can even ask for a second opinion or they can contact their closest pediatric oncology mm. unit and there's one in every university hospital in the country. That's, that's really, really crucial and key to learn and know. Now this is for no shape, way or form saying that if your child does exhibit some of these symptoms that it's time to worry and they might have cancer. Definitely. No, we're not saying that. We're just saying that this is something to be aware of and this does seem to exhibit itself. It's shown a pattern and this might be what is happening to your child. But we're not saying that no. this is what happens and it's time to freak out, yes. no. Take a breath, as Dr. Anal said, and definitely go to an expert and the experts will help. Definitely, fully agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. So we have asked our social media if they've got any questions for you, Dr. Anal. Sure. And we've got Mamosa here who says, I would love to know if a child has a lump on their neck, but it's not painful and will be, will it, could it possibly be cancer? I'm afraid because my mom died of ovarian cancer. Oh, it's very, very sensitive. Yes. Yeah, so thank you, Mamosa, for that question. Very mm. important. Um, enlarged lymph nodes in a child is very common. And by far, most of them will be, be benign and not mm. a cancer. So the things to watch out for would be if it is continuously enlarging or growing quite fast, becoming more and more, and if there are also other symptoms like fever and weight loss, then that must be investigated. In South Africa, however, tuberculosis is um, also a very common diagnosis mm -hmm. and a common cause of lumps in the neck. So definitely get it checked out. Definitely. Painful yeah. or not painful. Mm -hmm. We've got Chadwick Dunstan here, Dustin, who says, or rather asks, what is childhood cancer? Okay, thank you for that important question. So childhood cancer really means that some of the body cells mm -hmm. are misbehaving. For some reason, and nobody has really found what that is, a trigger is, they start growing very rapidly, dividing re very rapidly, and they don't die like a normal cell would normally mm. do. Um, and that because they're proliferating all the time, they form a mass. And by that, they cause them problems in the body, which mm. cause symptoms. Thank you so much for that diagnosis and breaking it down, those symptoms at home. I hope that you definitely feel a lot more clued up and a lot more confident going out of this Mommy Monday. Now we shake off all those Monday blues with award-winning DJ Prince KB after the break.